we've got it wrong. Really? What do we have yes. wrong, Mike Stevenson? Well, I mean, you you can you can pin it down to yes, three things. Uh, okay. One is we've allowed you know business um, to kind of morph into unfettered greed because uh, business is a force for good, and business should be a force for good, and right. the market can solve problems, but we've allowed it to get out of control. And we've now got a situation where I think the 64 richest people in the world, and we're talking about multi-billionaires, right. um, own more than the bottom half of the entire global population. Mm -hmm. Now, they would say they're successful. Yes, okay. They've had a great business idea. Some people are making money simply by having money. I don't think they're earning it. I think it's a spurious to claim to say that people are earning it. It's too much money. They can't spend it in their lifetime. Right. They keep and, charging us, though. And, and they keep charging keep us. That. Absolutely. Now, that's what I mean by greed. Yeah. That's gone too far. And we've also seen profiteering, you know, during the time of COVID in, in this country, yeah. In particular, the okay. government gave contracts to their friends and, you know, they were charging exorbitant mm -hmm. amounts of money and the stuff was never used. because In Scotland, right? It's imperfect. Mm -hmm. This is in the UK, right okay. across the UK. Okay, UK. UK. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, Scotland did better. Ah. It had a much better procurement system and it paid less per unit okay. um, than, in, than they did in, in the rest of uh, Britain. Now, that, to me, is... Is taking greed beyond any sense of of moral boundary. Yeah. And you know, what do we do in a situation like that? Well, we have to we have to kind of rebalance our understanding of what money is about. Yeah. Money gives you good things, it allows you to live in a place that gives you home, uh, comforts, it allows you to have space around you, allows you to have nice things, and it allows you the freedom to travel. And to have money in reserve. But beyond that, it is merely um, a tool for narcissism. Mm, good it can't be used. It's a, but, but the worst thing about it is it's become a tool to support governments. So, you know, our politicians are elected with money. Yeah. Made mainly by money. And that means that the control is held by the people who have exercised the greatest greed. Yeah, so that's where, where the problem is. Yeah, sure. in the America yeah. and in, in the UK. Yeah. Um, so that is where we are at the moment. So yeah. we have to separate money from politics. Mm -hmm. We cannot have, you know, I mean, it's ridiculous. I think in, in, in the States you have to have... You have to have two billion or something to back you, you know, to become yeah. uh president. Yeah. Well, that's ridiculous. You know, Seriously. um, it's ridiculous. Yeah. The the best leaders are people that you know live in some of our most impoverished communities because leadership then becomes a necessity to survive. And yeah. you know, we've got this tradition in this country of um our leaders coming through, you know, one or two schools, public schools or private schools. It depends on which way you look at it. Yeah. Um, but these are schools that cost an exorbitant amount of money and they give people confidence. They give people a, a lot of confidence. And that confidence is often at complete odds with their ability. And they, they, they feign to have a kind of leadership gene. They don't. And we've allowed bad leadership yep. in politics. And I think sure. now we need to we need to reroute politics in yeah. the communities, you yeah. know, that's you know, where we live right. and yeah. and where the power should be, because the people are sovereign. You know, yeah. that is that is the whole foundation of, of democracy. Yep. And we've gone beyond that. Way beyond there are that. countries. You know, the Scandinavian countries operate, you know, on a different political platform. They're the most successful countries in terms of, you know, 
having a close gap. They're the most advanced in terms of tackling climate change. They're the most progressive in terms of tax um, systems. And they also are consistently social democratic. So they don't have a first past the post system. So they've got, you know, the parties are aligned in the parliament according to the number of or the proportion of votes they get. So they have to beat things out. They have to argue. They have to agree on a on a pathway. Yeah. So they've been consistent. You don't have this roller coaster for four yeah. years and right. then another roller coaster. And that doesn't make sense. It no. doesn't allow people to rest easy. It doesn't allow, you know, things like health and education right. to be fundamentals of a decent society. Yeah. So that's that's what we've gone wrong. <laughs> right. And of and course we've damaged our, our planet through all that greed and well, greed has disease. has damaged our planet, yeah. Because mm. we've known for a long time, yeah. and I think the big oil companies have known for a very long time that damage is being done and that the earth, earth has got a limited well people on Earth, I've got a limited time span. I, think, I know, right? <laughs> I think it's important to say that the Earth will flourish when we are gone. Um, it might, but we're tipping yeah. the scales. But we are tipping the scales, oh, yeah. Oh, um, oh. But, you know, in terms of, you know, wild, yeah. in terms of, you know, destroying the Brazilian rainforest, that is greed. It's also a political uh, decision yeah. to do yeah. that. Right. So we now know this. Mm -hmm. There are people who argue against it. OK, well, I would say to them, you know, 99 percent of the scientists across the world are all agreed on the fact that we are doing damage to the planet. Even if they had a scintilla of doubt, mm -hmm. you would still not put future generations to the sword like they apparently are quite willing to do on the basis of a belief that the whole world is wrong and they are right. Well, that whole science thing too, that's just that bought in and, and have a good research project is almost ridiculous, you know? Yeah. So they're a part of the problem as well. And then let yeah. the young flourish. Oh my goodness, you have yeah. some words there. <laughs> well, I, I, listen, I think I was at my absolute best when I was in my, late teens and 20s. In terms of seeing things very clearly without clutter, yeah. uh, without preconception, without great political alliances. And, you know, to have that clarity when you're young makes you the perfect generation to be helping us to solve those problems. In fact, you know, getting our young to be part of a solution now, yeah. not waiting for the problem to grow, where they have to, you know, scramble about for a solution when they're in their forties and fifties, right. when they're thinking about their young. And I really do think that one of the things that you know I've found in my work around schools, for example, is if I work to school with a school and I say to them, you know, draw pictures of the city that you want to live in this city, oh. and they draw pictures, and they put little signs. And when I look at them, I know that these are the cities we should be living, living in now, yeah, right. not somewhere down the line. And we shouldn't have political opposition to the things that need to be done. Yeah, We know they can be done. We know that uh, Curitiba in southern Brazil, is one of the most revered eco cities in the world. Public transport, perfect. Green space, perfect. Right. Um, you know, recycling way ahead of anywhere else. And and also they've got, you know, 64% of the poorest part of the population now working in a very lucrative construction industry. Right. The GDP is up, average earnings are up. And it's interesting, uh, Mayor Jaime Lerner, who drove this, with the simple vision of a city designed for people. Mm. Now, what's interesting about that is it's not let's reduce carbon emissions. It's not let's take a cars off our roads. It's not let's tackle poverty. Right. It's not a negative. You know, who's going to disagree with a city 
designed for its people. Yeah. Yeah. So a, a child will say that. The, a child will say, I want a city that's designed for all of us. Yeah. And an adult will say, what have we got to address? Where's the budget coming from? Can we do it? There's too much opposition. Um, they'll take a position that's going to be immediately adversarial. Yeah. And the change makers in the world draw people in because they don't complicate it with policies and facts yeah. and figures. They just say, we want a city designed for people. Yeah. Well, now we want a world designed for people yeah. and all those plants and you know creatures that inhabit the world. Yeah, well, we finally so, realize that we truly yeah. are all connected and what happens in you know, one place is going to catch up with all yes. of us. And people yes. are very selfishly motivated, like, what's in it for me? So as yeah. a good leader, you show them yeah. what's in it for them. So thank you so Absolutely. much, Mike. This has been 